that one would be worth seeing. <laughs> uh, tell us about your first drag experience. <laughs> oh lord, my first drag experience was in Orlando. Oh, okay. Um, that's where Statement was created. I started performing in Orlando. I worked at quite a few places down there. And um, the first time I performed was um, at Club Firestone, which was a street bar. And um, they did a gay night once a week. And uh, I used to run around with um, uh, Roxy. Roxy Andrews from RuPaul. She and I have been friends for a year. And we used to go to the bar every, every night together. And that was where I did my first production. I did, um, Does Anybody Want to Have Sex Tonight by Gillette. I was a hoe. <laughs> Not much has changed. What led you to choosing Sabin as your name? That was actually given to me by another performer. Oh. Um, when I started out, I was actually going to go by Xander. And then I found out there was another Xander in Florida. And I didn't want to be like anybody else. The sponge is hurting me. Um, <laughs> don't know what it's doing. Uh, so I didn't want to be like anybody else. And then I was going to be Climax. So it's going to be K-L-Y-M-A-X-X-X. Um, kind of to stick with the kind of the family theme, mm -hmm. and, um, and somebody had introduced me and they said something about if you can be super sassy and sexy, we're gonna call you Saban. I was like Saban. I like that, <laughs> and that's kind of how it became. What was your first drag bingo experience like? Oh, my first drag bingo was right here at my fifteen. Right. <laughs> uh, You're the first I actually originated it. Yeah, yeah. I've been here since the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, I originated it, you know, like ten and a half years ago. And uh, we used to do one Saturday night once a month. And it was actually, I think it was January 19th was our first day because it was the day before the Super Bowl. And at that point, I used to do a number before I would um, do bingo. Mm -hmm. And I did Mickey because the Super Bowl was the next day. And I did it in this little black and white referee costume. <laughs> uh, and I used to sit on top of the counter. They had a little stage that they built for me on top of the counter across the street. And um, yeah, it was a fun time. Because <laughs> that was when Drake came. Drag Bingo was kind of a new thing. Which was new, and there were lots of people in Royal Oak that did not want us here. Right. So they were very upset about it. It was us, a different time. Us being here. And then throughout the years, Royal Oak has really embraced us and we've taken such wonderful care of us. Mm -hmm. We've really kind of become a staple in the city. Okay, so do you remember the first bingo ever called? <laughs> first bingo ever called? Yes! That was when we were, um, it was really kind of a, a gay crowd at that point. Mm -hmm. And it was a gentleman, he was to my right. I remember that very specifically, actually. Really? I don't remember his name. Did I you, apologize, I have his name. Did you read him the film? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely, it was my specialty. He had a blue polo shirt that was atrocious. <laughs> and I let him know it. That choices are important in life. And the one that he had chosen that evening was a bad reflection upon his life. <laughs> yeah, I let him know. What has been, because you've been here, like you said, since the beginning, what's been your favorite part about being here, about 515, about drag bingo, can be kind of anything open-ended. So, my, the, my favorite part about this job is that you never really know, it's twofold, mm -hmm. it's a two-part question, or two-part answer for me. First, you never really know what you're going to do for somebody else until the show is over. Mm -hmm. You know, we go out here and we... You know, we do our show, and I mean, I never really know what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's offensive, and sometimes it's not, you know, whatever. But you never really know who you're going to encounter. And I, I will always remember this. I had a young lady that came up to me after the show. We were outside taking pictures. And she had come up to me after, after the show, and we had taken a big group um, picture with her family. And she came up to me, and she said, can I give you a hug? And I said, of course. I mean, I'm, I'm a big hugger. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how you welcome people, and you learn so much more about somebody with with a hug than a handshake. And, because you can tell right there how welcoming somebody is by how they embrace the hug. Right. And I said, of course. She came up, she gave me a big hug, and I went to go let go, and she squeezed just a little bit more. And she said, I want to thank you for tonight. She said, I lost my husband about a month ago. She said, this is my first time that I've been out since he passed. And she said, this is the first time I remember laughing no. since he passed away. Laughter and it was the best medicine. It was, it la laughter is always the best medicine. And it was such a touching moment. And it was just between the two of us. It wasn't anything that was discussed, you know, in a crowd, in a group, amongst the rest of her family or friends. It was just she and I. And you could tell the sincerity behind that. And in that moment, you, I realized that it, you never know what you're doing for somebody else. Right. Twofold to that is I never really know what this show has done for me until I've needed it. 
and I remember the day that my, my grandfather died. I was supposed to host my show that night, and I came in. It was one of those nights that, you know, sometimes you don't you don't give the best because your mind is elsewhere, mm -hmm. and you I hate to say this, but sometimes you put it on autopilot, and you just you just kind of get through it, you know. And it wasn't until the end of the night when I was finishing, I was saying my my kind of closing that I realized how much I needed them and I needed to hear them laugh and I needed to laugh with them because that in that moment I needed to not be alone where originally I was not going to come in because I just wanted to be alone but it, they've done so much for me like the audience has done a lot for me that they don't even realize now with the superstar we are today bitch I just used to paint some designs on my face and I said let's go <laughs> Get a, some uh, stencils. Girls, a wall man. Hell no, I repainted that shit. Oh. What piece of advice would you give to someone who's attending Drag Queen Bingo for the first time? Nah. Advice for a first timer? <laughs> <laughs> um, relax all your muscles. It only burns for the first three minutes. It's like chlamydia or bottom. It takes some getting used to. But once you get used to it, it's real fun. <laughs> so my favorite cocktail, I'm real spicy. My right. favorite cocktail is a, a strawberry or a raspberry Italian soda. You know, a little Sprite and syrup. Woo! Getting risky now. You like it fruity. Yes, I like it fruity. I like, it. <laughs> I like my gay man. I like to taste the rainbow. What? are you passionate about underneath it all my whole platform is about love that's my whole platform i don't think that there's enough uplifting of people and things in the world so that's why i never resort like in my shows and things like that like i know i do like insult comedy and stuff like that but i would never lower myself to something of like physical comedy um, where it's something that nobody has control over. You know, like, people that, you know, make fun of someone's looks and things like that, that's, that goes to a whole nother level. You know, you can crack a joke about, you know, like somebody, you know, a pay less shoe. You know, making a joke about that. Because in that, there's no, there's no harm to that. It's just meant to be from a funny place. But when you cross that line and you take it to another place, that's something that people remember. And I don't ever want anybody to leave my show and be hurt. So that's my, my whole stance on, on on performing and what I'm able to do on a platform is to just spread love and to remember to love each other and lift each other up and help each other in that that time. You know, you never know when somebody just needs a kind word and, you know, a, a, a helpful hand and a smiling face. So my whole thing is, you know, just I want people to leave with a smile on their face and while there was insults and things like that, I don't want them to leave with that. I want them to leave with the laughter and the, the message of fun and love. What is the look you are going for this evening? Uh, I like to go real clownfish. It's usually the look I go for. You know, some girls like to be real fishy. Um, I go for clownfish um, or tilapia, you know, that non-fishy fish. So, what are your social handles? Um, so my social handles, of course, you can find me on Instagram, Save a Detroit. You can find me on um, Facebook because they require me to have a last name. You can find me on, on Save a Detroit Cooper. They want part of my real identity, you know, part of my soul, my firstborn, my urine sample. Um, Twitter, you can find me at Save a Detroit. Uh, Xtube, you can find me at Vagina Bubbles. Um, what up? On Pinterest, you can find me on. Um, uh, um, I am on Pinterest, bitch. I got. I got to talk about bullshit. Um, you can find me on Christian Mingle at Throw That Ass in a Prayer Circle. The Lord knows I do my best work on my knees. <laughs> um, and and I'll finish how I finish every one of my shows. In this crazy ass world, there's only one thing you can do: take care of yourselves and each other. Good night. God bless. <laughs>